Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here. In continuation to our uh, previous videos of lipid metabolism, in this video, I'll be talking about oxidation of orchid fatty acids. So we have seen how beta oxidation is happening. So similarly, how the orchid fatty acids are undergoing oxidation. So with the difference between beta oxidation and uh, beta oxidation uh, is like that. Beta oxidation is proper in case of even chain fatty acids. So when you classify the fatty acids based on the number of carbons like uh, odd number or even number. So if they are end up with the even numbers, they are known as even chain fatty acids. If they are end up with the odd number, they are known as odd chain fatty acids. So beta oxidation is complete in case of even chain fatty acids like as we have seen example palmitic acid 16 carbon otherwise you can say stearic acid 18 carbon oleic acid or something like so all even numbers so every time beta oxidation means 2 2 carbons will be removed but what is the scenario in case of odd chain fatty acids okay they do exist odd chain fatties they do exist in our diet uh, how to claim energy from those substances so that's why there is a mechanism there is a separate thing known as oxidative oxidation of odd chain fatty acids and how here you remember one thing so the difference these odd chain fatty acids all undergo beta oxidation okay similar like even chain fatty acids but only the thing is at the last step okay as like in beta oxidation the last step you will be getting one more acetyl coa because of the even number but in odd chain fatty acids here three carbons will be there so there will be no removal of two carbons so at the last step you will be getting three carbon compound that is propenyl coa in place of acetyl coa you will be getting propenyl coa and how this propenyl coa again will be converted to acetyl coa and how it will be maybe not converted to acetyl coa how it will be involved in energy production that we will see in this video so the odd chain fatty acids are oxidized exactly in the same manner of even chain fatty acid until the last step however after successive removal of two carbon units at the end one three carbon unit propenyl coa is produced then how efficiently you are utilizing this propenyl coa for energy production that we will see so first enzyme to be involved in here the propenyl coa so till last step it is similar to beta oxidation steps like same steps dehydrogenation hydration and then next third step is again dehydrogenation the last step is cleavage so like this up to the last three carbons it is same and then last step you will be getting propenyl coa so what is the fate of propenyl coa so here the enzyme carboxylase will come into the action Okay, propenyl coa is carboxylated. Propenyl coa is a three carbon compound. Carboxylase will add one more carbon and convert propenyl coa to D methyl melanyl coa and it is a biotin dependent carboxylase. Biotin is vitamin B7. Okay, here the coenzyme is carboxylase reactions always taken by taken care by B7, vitamin B7 that is biotin. Okay, and biotin is member of vitamin B complex group. One molecule of ATP is utilized to supply energy. At the same time, resumes here the D methyl melanyl coa will be converting into L methanyl methyl melanyl coa okay D form of methyl melanyl coa converted to L methyl melanyl coa and mutase what it will do this L methyl melanyl coa is rearranged to form succinyl coa by L methyl melanyl coa mutase okay here L methyl melanyl coa is rearranged to form succinyl coa where we have seen the succinyl coa the succinyl coa is a intermediate of TCS cycle so through which this so when acetyl coa is there it is a starting substance of tcs cycle it is entering tcs cycle but here we got propenyl coa propenyl coa cannot be converted into acetyl coa but it has to somehow enter into tcs cycle through which form it will be entering into the tcs cycle by making succinyl coa so there are three steps will be involving one is carboxylation reaction one is resumase reaction one is mutase so the last step the reaction needs the third step that is mutase reaction that will be requiring B12 because L methyl melanyl coa it has to get rid of the methyl group. Then who will take care of that removed methyl group? Here vitamin B12 cobalamin will come into the action. It accepts the methyl removed methyl group from methyl melanyl coa and it converted into methyl cobalamin. Okay, that is the reason if the person is suffering with B12 deficiency, he cannot utilize propenyl coa in making of energy. So succinyl coa enters into TCS cycle, finally converted to oxalate state and used for gluconeogenesis in making of energy. And propenyl coa is derived from metabolism of valine isoleucine as well. So you see here overview of the propenyl coa metabolism. So this is a three carbon. Okay, so one more carbon you are adding two, three, and four. Okay, four carbons. So propenyl coa converted to methyl melanyl coa, which is in D form. And D methyl melanyl coa is converted to L methyl melanyl coa. Okay. 
here racemase will come into the action that means converting isomer D form to L form and here mutase it is mainly required adenosyl form of B12 okay this methyl form will be taken by the B12 and converted to methyl cobalamine so finally it converted to succinyl coa it will be enter into tca cycle and oxalic state oxalic state to gluconeogenesis so in case of b12 deficiency this reaction will not takes place so there will be accumulation of methyl melanyl coa and it causes methyl melanic aciduria previous videos we have discussed organic aciduria right so here it leads to methyl melanyl aciduria so with this itself we can make out we can assess the vitamin b12 deficiency as well so what is the role of propionic acid in gluconeogenesis ordinary fatty acids are cleaved to acetyl coa units which on entering into krebs cycle are completely oxidized to co2 and hence as general rule but fatty acids cannot be used for gluconeogenesis got it however propionate is entering into citric acid cycle so in the by the definition we have seen we have learned by the definition synthesis of glucose from non carbohydrate sources such as uh, pyruvate lactate okay anyhow pyruvate when lactate is there lactate has converted back to pyruvate it's a reversible reaction then glycerol glycerol will be entering into the gluconeogenesis in the liver and what about the propionic acid or chain fatty acid when they broke down propionic acid will be there so this propionic acid will be involved in gluconeogenesis by converting into succinyl coa and succinyl coa to oxalic acid oxalic acid will be converted to phosphonyl pyruvate phosphonyl pyruvate to glucose right so there will be CO2 elimination steps so propionate can be channeled to gluconeogenesis so because in TCA cycle removal of CO2 at the level of isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase but succinyl OA is entering into the TCA cycle after the elimination of CO2s so there is no channel for removing the CO2s so that's why it is channeled to gluconeogenesis so thus three carbon units from odd chain fatty acids are useful for gluconeogenesis cow milk contains significant quantity of odd chain fatty acids so the person who is consuming cow milk they should be having a sufficient mechanism okay to convert propionate into succinyl coa for that that person shouldn't be deficient of vitamin b12 so inborn errors what are the inborn errors related to propionic propionate metabolism so propionyl coa carboxylase deficiency what happened here when person is deficient of propionyl coa carboxylase propionyl coa cannot be converted to dimethyl melanyl coa right so what is happening propionyl coa will be accumulate in the body and causing propionic acidemia it leads to ketoacidosis and development of abnormalities and methyl melanic aciduria this we have already seen in case of b12 deficiency this l methyl melanyl coa will not be converted into succinyl coa and there is accumulation of methyl melanyl coa in the body and causes methyl melanic aciduria okay this can be treated by giving oral dose of vitamin b12 and this group of had deficiencies formation of adenosyl b12 with deficient mitose activity the second type didn't respond to cyanocobalamin and had deficiency of the enzyme racemase or mutase methyl melanate affects the metabolism of brain leading to mental retardation in these cases so that's why it is very important treating methyl melanic aciduria so alpha oxidation so so far we have seen beta oxidation and what is alpha oxidation alpha oxidation is also happening okay it is a process which fatty acids are oxidized by removing carbon atoms one at a time but not two in beta oxidation two carbons are removed but in alpha oxidation only one carbon is removed at a time I, but it is also from the carboxyl gate this process is important in brain the fatty acid doesn't need activation hydroxylation occurs at the alpha carbon atom and then oxidizes at the alpha keto acid the keto acid then undergoes decarboxylation yielding a molecule of co2 and fatty acid with one carbon atom less this process occurs in endoplasmic reticulum and doesn't require coa but it does not generate any energy some fatty acids undergo alpha oxidation in peroxisomes also so that is the importance of alpha oxidation beta oxidation taking place in almost all the cells okay but alpha oxidation is specifically taking place in brain and here alpha oxidation only one carbon is removing at a time okay and this is also mix up of the reactions like what to say decarboxylation and then hydroxylation so these are the two steps have combined you see here this is a phytanic acid okay alpha oxidation is mainly used for fatty acids that have methyl group at beta carbon which blocks beta oxidation so that is the main reason behind alpha oxidation it is derived from phytol present in chlorophyll milk animal fats so this is a phytanic acid you see here the methyl group is attached at the beta carbon so this is a blockage actually otherwise if methyl group is not there 
beta oxidation will be taking place but at beta carbon this as methyl group is attached this blocking the beta oxidation so that's why cells has to go towards alpha oxidation so here it will be removed In, instead of this okay this is beta oxidation place this is alpha oxidation place okay here methyl group is attached that's why here the cleavage is taking place so rapsum disease this is one of the clinical significant disease rapsums it is a metabolic error due to lack of alpha hydroxylase okay this hydroxylase reaction is important for alpha oxidation because of the enzyme deficiency alpha hydroxylase the phytanic acid will be accumulating okay it results to rapsums disease so alpha oxidation doesn't occur and phytanic acid accumulates in the tissues the patient present with severe neurological symptoms polyneuropathy retinitis pigmentosa nerve defenses and cerebellar ataxia because we have already said alpha oxidation is mainly taking place in brain cells okay so mental retardation and neurological symptoms are common in rapsums disease regression of symptoms is observed with restricted dietary intake of phytanic acid milk is a good source of phytanic acid which may be avoided if the person is suffering with rapsums disease right and infantil rapsums disease what is infantil rapsums disease it is a paroxysmal disorder similar to gelbeger syndrome and adenoleukodystrophy hence phytanic acid accumulates along with a very long chain fatty acid children do not survive long overnight death may be happening okay so here it is a paroxysmal disorder infantil rapsums disease is a paroxysmal disorder is like similar to gelbeger syndrome phytanic acids along with very long chain vlcfa means very long chain fatty acids so omega oxidation is also there what is omega we have seen in the market lipids will be taken fatty acids will be taken in the form of what to say tablets or uh, pills they are omega 3 fatty acid rich of omega 3 fatty acids omega 6 fatty acids so how these omega 6 fatty acids will be undergoing oxidation to provide energy so that is called omega oxidation it is a minor pathway taking place in microsomes with the help of hydroxylase enzymes involving nadph and cytochrome remember beta oxidation and beta oxidation is required nad and fad and alpha oxidation is mostly is not requiring any reducing equivalents okay it is hydroxylation and then decarboxylation but here in omega oxidation we require in place of nad we require nadph and also because it is taking place in microsomes we need cytochrome p450 also the methyl group is converted to alcoholic group and subsequently oxidized with the help of nad plus to form carboxylic group coh to produce dicarboxylic acids so here in case of any defect in omega oxidation you can see the accumulation of dicarboxylic acid and they excrete in the urine okay omega oxidation becomes important when beta oxidation is defective and dicarboxylic acids 6 carbon 8 carbons are excreted in urine causing dicarboxylic aciduria so this is the take home message okay when we need omega oxidation when beta oxidation is not happening then omega oxidation is needed okay so if there is a defective what is happening more omega oxidation so more small chain fatty acid will be produced so they leads a condition dicarboxylic aciduria inherited defects in the enzymes beta oxidation ketogenesis also leads to non ketotic hypoglycemia coma and fatty liver defects are known as 3 hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase 3 keto acyl coa thiolase and hng coa lyase deficiency dicarboxylic aciduria okay this is also genetic in relation okay which is cargo excretion of dicarboxylic acids by non ketotic hypoglycemia okay and it is caused by lack of mitochondrial medium chain acyl coa dehydrogenase okay this is very very important in case of children so because of lack of this enzyme infantile death syndrome sudden infantile death syndrome overnight baby will be baby will be doing fine in the evening in the night but all of a sudden in the morning it will lie dead okay because of the deficient of the enzyme mitochondrial medium chain acyl coa dehydrogenase so so far there are more than 25 enzymes have been identified for fatty acid metabolism in humans out of which 15 are in relation with association with the metabolic disorders so that's all about or chain fatty acid oxidation omega oxidation and alpha oxidation and inherited disorders of fatty acid degradation thank you so much that's all about lipid metabolism thank you